After watching this video lecture, students will be able to utilize quantum numbers to identify the distance, energy, orbital type location, and spin of electrons that are found in an atom. So quantum mechanics brought us Schrodinger's wave equation. Um, and Schrodinger's wave equation is a calculus-based calculus um, approach to defining uh, the location of an electron within an atom. Um, and what its solutions have led to uh, is the orbital or electron cloud um, analysis or approach to where we can find our electrons. So instead of Bohr's model, where the electrons just orbit um, in these circular planetary type pathways, um, what we actually have is basically a 3D region um, around the nucleus uh, that basically um, has specific shapes and specific areas around the nucleus. Um, and subsequently are the places where you would find the electrons. So we no longer have these, um, you know, planetary orbits. Instead, we have something like what you see here. In this case, it's kind of a spherical orbit. Um, in here, it's kind of a dumbbell shape. Here is a clover shape. And these are um, the calculated locations or calculated um, 3D regions where the electrons uh, would reside. Okay, so we'll talk about this a little bit more. So quantum numbers um, come in sets of four. So basically the four quantum numbers um, are identifiers for the specific location of an electron within um, an atom. Okay, so basically they specify the address or the location that you can find each and every electron. Now the Pauli exclusion principle, it states that no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. Just like I can't have the same address you know, as the person who lives next to me. Um, our addresses may be similar. We may live on the same street, you know, same zip code, what, what have you, um, but we have different house numbers or different apartment numbers, okay? So um, in that same way, electrons that reside in the atom are gonna have four quantum numbers and they're gonna be unique numbers. Um, nobody's gonna have the same four being exactly alike. So, Quantum numbers, um, again, are broken down. There's four different types. And the first one we're going to talk about is the principal quantum number. It is represented by the letter N. Um, and N indicates uh, the main energy uh, level occupied by the electron. Okay, so N can be 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. Um, the higher the number, the further that electron will reside from the nucleus, the higher in energy that el electron's going to be. Um, and it subsequently tells you um, the relative location um, distance-wise uh, from the nucleus that that electron occupies. And as you can see here to the right, you know, we have some diagramming of potential orbitals. So you notice a 1s orbital, 2s orbital, 3s orbital. Um, each one of these orbit orbitals is successively larger. Why? Because this potential orbital location for the electron is going to be closer to the nucleus, hence it's smaller. Um, the 2s orbital is a little larger. Obviously, the electrons that hang out there would be further from the nucleus. And then the 3s, you notice, is even larger. So um, your principal quantum number is going to tell you um, the distance from the nucleus that that electron uh, uh, exists in, as well as its uh, relative energy. So the angular momentum quantum number, which is represented by the letter L, okay, it indicates the shape of the orbital that the electron is residing in, okay? And so we have, you know, S's, P's, D's, and F's, okay? Um, so uh, S orbitals are gonna be spherical in shape. Um, their angular momentum quantum number corresponds to L equals zero. Uh, P orbitals here, okay, they're dumbbell shaped. L is gonna be equal to one. D, they have um, basically this clover shape, although there's some other shapes um, in the subset, um, but L equals two, and then you have F, which is just kind of crazy here, um, and L equals three. Um, and basically for any N value, we can figure out the types of orbitals that are available for electrons to occupy. Um, so we can calculate what potential um, orbitals the electron could reside in, by taking um, basically our n value and subtracting one and going from zero all the way up to what that value is, okay? Um, so um, if you have an n value that's very high, you're gonna have more orbital types and orbital shapes that the electrons could potentially occupy. Um, so for instance, if I have n equals two, right? My l values, okay, are my possible electron uh, locations or my possible orbital types that electrons can reside in, um, are going to correspond to 0 and 1. 
Um, I get that because obviously my calculation tells me here that I can go from L, sorry, L equals zero all the way up to whatever N minus one is. Okay, well zero and then N minus one in this case, okay, two minus one gives you one. So L equals zero and one. L equals 0 and 1. 0 and 1 values for L correspond to the s and the p orbital. So the electrons in the n equals 2 energy level are going to occupy either s or p orbitals. The magnetic quantum number m sub L um, indicates uh, the orientation of orbitals uh, around the nucleus, so basically around an xyz axis, um, as well as uh, basically can tell you the number of orbitals in a specific subshell. Okay, and so m sub l is going to be take, calculated um, by taking our l value. Um, and if we go from negative l all the way up to zero, all the way up to positive l, um, that's going to give us basically our m sub l values associated with that specific um, orbital sublevel. Okay, so um, if we look at l equals 2, okay, l equals 2, remember, corresponds to d-shaped orbitals. Okay, and if we take L equals 2 and we calculate the m sub L values, we get negative 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Okay, and I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 answers. Okay, so 5 answers here are going to correspond to 5 different orbitals. Okay, um, and the 5 orbitals in the D sublevel um, are as follows um, below here. Okay, so you can see number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, there's five different orbitals. They all have different orientations around the x, um, y, z axis. Um, and you subsequently have um, five different orbitals with different directionality that the electrons can potentially reside in. Okay. And the last quantum number is the spin quantum number, or m sub s. Okay. Um, it indicates the spin of the electron um, as either minus one half or plus one half. Um, and basically, um, there's only two electrons that can fit into each orbital. Um, and so when the electrons get put into an orbital, when we put two in, uh, basically to dissipate repulsive forces, because you know negative charges don't really want to be next to each other, um, the electrons spin in opposite, opposite directions. Okay, So one's going to spin clockwise, um, the other's going to spin counterclockwise, and we subsequently have our plus and minus uh, spins on those electrons. Okay, um, and this just re decreases repulsive forces, and is just you know something that is uh, present in electrons that occupy orbitals. Okay, so these are our quantum numbers. Um, remember, no two electrons in an atom can have the same four quantum numbers, um, and Basically, this is just how we approach them. Now, we're going to go ahead and look at some problems. Okay, so in our first problem here, it says, what are the total number of orbitals available for n equals 3? So I need the total number of orbitals, right? Okay, so n equals 3 is going to be my principal quantum number, right? It tells me how um, far from the nucleus I am or, you know, how, um, how high in energy the uh, electron is uh, in that specific atom. Okay, so n equals 3. Um, is going to tell us the energetic. So that doesn't tell us the total number of orbitals. Okay, so um, let's take it to the next thing, which is L. L corresponds to our angular momentum quantum number, and it will um, tell us the uh, types of orbitals that the uh, electrons can occupy. Okay, so if we go ahead and we look at that, remember we're going to solve this. Uh, we go from 0 all the way up to n minus 1. So L equals 0, 1, and 2, because 3 minus 1 gives us 2. Okay, and so the orbitals that uh, are possible um, as locations for uh, our electrons are S's, P's, and D's. Okay, now, so our angular momentum quantum number has told us the type of orbitals, um, but it has not told us uh, the total number of orbitals. Okay, so now that brings us to our next value. Okay, and our next value is going to be M sub L. M sub L is going to be our uh, magnetic quantum number. Remember your magnetic quantum number? It'll tell you um, orientation of the orbitals, um, or the different number of orientations, as well as the total number of orbitals in that sublevel. Okay, so when we're doing this calculation, we need to do it for the different types um, of orbitals and subsequently the different L values. So remember, we calculate these um, going from um, basically minus L to zero to positive L. Okay, so for L equals zero, okay, our M sub L value is going to be zero. Okay, for, M sub, for our L value equal to one, 
our m sub l is going to be equal to minus 1, 0, plus 1. Okay? And then for our, our m sub l calculation for l equals 2, we're going to go from minus 2 um, to minus 1 to 0, plus 1 to plus 2. Okay? Notice, guys, there are repeated numbers, but what I need you to understand in the m sub l is that each number is a separate solution. Okay, so even though it's zero um, shows up in each of these m sub l values, um, it is referring to a different solution. Okay, so now what do I look at? Okay, well, I look at the number of answers from each of these. Okay, so I have one here, I have three here, and I have five here. Okay, so the total number of answers here is nine, which corresponds to nine orbitals. Okay, so there are nine different orbitals that electrons could possibly occupy um, when discussing this energy level, okay? Now, let's go ahead and let's look at the same type of problem, so total number of orbitals, for 3p, okay? So what I want you guys to notice here, this 3 right here does correspond to my n value, okay? However, what you should notice here is that instead of them just asking me this question for the generic n equals 3 energy level, they've asked it for a specific orbital type. You see the 3p, okay? And so remember, p corresponds to my l value. So my l value here is equal to 1, okay? So if I want to know the total number, number of orbitals in a 3p sublevel, I'm going to take the l equals 1, and I'm going to solve for my m sub l. Okay, minus 1, 0, plus 1. I got 1, 2, 3 different answers. So 3 orbitals is going to be my answer here. Okay. All right, and then this last problem here, guys, n equals 2. Um, so draw the shape of each orbital type. Okay, so n equals 2 is what I have. L is going to be equal to 0 and 1. 0 corresponds to the s orbital type, uh, L, L equals 1 corresponds to the P, and then I'm going to draw those, okay, and you guys have seen these shapes already, they were on previous slides, so these are my S's, okay, these are my P orbitals, okay, kind of dumbbell shape, okay, and you would draw the orbitals, um, the orbital types for this um, energy level, okay, so these are basically some approaches to our quantum numbers and, and our calculations.